Amen. Um, if you want to turn, turn in your Bibles to John chapter 16. Uh, that's, what, that's where we'll be when we get into Scripture. But I, we've got a, I was planning on today being the day where we kind of went back to where what I preached in the morning in Bloomfield, I preach here. And, and this morning's sermon, I, 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 God was working on me in that sermon all throughout the week. And so if you, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, you can go to the, go to the Grace Point YouTube page and find that sermon um, called Jesus is, the, is a Better Reversal. Uh, it should be up now, I think. Uh, Adam's posted it. So um, it's, it, that is just, Jesus is, is awesome, right? Like, <laughs> like we, we were, I, I just love the idea. And that's why Amazing Grace is my favorite song. I once was lost and now I'm found. Amen. Like there's this reversal that Jesus does as we're going through the book of Esther, uh, Jesus or God in that sense of the Old Testament, he, he did a reversal. Haman was high and mighty and he got arrogant and selfish and he ended up dying, right? Being killed on the cross or on the pole that he had set up to kill Mordecai with. And Mordecai, who was going to get killed, ends up taking Haman's spot. And then the reversal between the Jews that were all spread throughout the land, they were going to die because Haman wanted to kill all the Jews. And then Mordecai takes his place because of what Haman did, and now all the Jews get to defend themselves. And they end up getting this amazing victory throughout all the place. And so this reversal that God keeps doing, I came up with an, an equation that says repentance from us plus reversals from God equals rejoicing. Right? Don't we like to rejoice? Man. And so I, I would encourage you to go and watch that. I'm not going to preach from that tonight because uh, I just, we, we've got to talk about a couple other things. But oh, I would encourage you to watch it and, and, and just be blessed, I hope, uh, by that. Uh, I just want, you know, obviously we had our vote last week um, for the sale of the church building. And, and as we announced last week, the sale or the, the, the vote went through uh, as with 18 to 3 was the vote. And so Sunday night, I immediately emailed the realtor uh, to let him know uh, because we had let him know that July 5th was going to be the date that we um, had set up for our vote. And he didn't get back to me, didn't get back to me. Didn't get back. Finally, Friday afternoon, just a couple days ago, he got back to me and said that the buyers have backed out. Um, so we are trying to figure out how to move forward. And our, what I really love, um, I, got, I called Marcy right away and we talked. And, and we, we believe um, that we need to continue to move forward with, with uh God's leading on us. Both of us have felt led in the same way. Um, and so we've used that kind of as a check and check some balance. And obviously the church vote went in such a way that, um, you know, I think God's leading on our hearts that, that it's time. It's time to move. Um, but there's this hiccup, and then we've got to deal with that. And so our board met just this evening before the service tonight. Um, and, and what we are doing, we're, we're going to continue to look at options for how we can either find a place to rent or, or put a, something out on the property to move forward. But we're not going to make any decisions um, for, for at least 30 days until next month's board meeting, and we can see what God does. The realtor did tell me that there was another interested party, um, and so he's, he was supposed to reach out to them Friday afternoon. I am also going to call, just, uh, just full transparency, guys. I'm not going to hold anything back. Uh, I'm going to call the buyers, the original buyers, tomorrow. Um, and try to talk to them about what happened, why this happened. It just doesn't doesn't seem on the. It's a, I had they they seemed okay with the date of July fifth a month ago, and then now all of a sudden they said they were impatient and wanting to find something else. So uh, I just want to talk to them and see what see what is going on. So that's where we're at with that. Uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know, and we'll uh, we we can talk and and do all that kind of stuff. Um, we still feel strongly that God is, is in this. And I said maybe that's why God's put that verse on my mind of, of God works for the good of those who love him, that he is continuing to work. So however this works out, that's, again, where I'm putting it at, where however God leads, whatever, however this goes, 
we're, we're going to be behind God. Amen? That's the, that's the goal. That's what we're going to be doing. So um, that's just the update, um, and then we'll continue to update as we go on. But that led me to really think about what I wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, and because I got that email. I was, sit, I was sitting on a lawnmower Friday morning, mid-morning, 11 o'clock or so, and I'm pushing those bars, and I'm, I'm saying I quoted the first three books of Matthew while I was mowing that grass. I'm trying to, my goal this year in teen quizzing is to, to memorize all of the book of Matthew. So I've gotten through three books, three or three chapters so far. I was quoting Matthew's chapter one, two, and three, and all of a sudden my phone, I felt it vibrate in my pocket, and I pulled it out, and I saw it was from the realtor, and I was excited. It's like, all right, here we go. And then it was like a gut punch, right? Anyone, you ever felt that? Like you're just totally excited for something. You're totally like, man, this this is going to be awesome. And then, ugh, right? Like, I mean, I was just done. The rest, I was deflated. I still had to finish. Mo- Have you seen how big that yard is out there in Bloomfield? If you've ever driven past that church, it's like five hours of mowing. I still had to finish that that day. With this thought, I didn't quote Matthew. I should have kept quoting Matthew, and I didn't do it. No. But God brought this verse to my mind, and that's in John chapter 16, verse 33. And I want to back up, so Adam, I, I know Adam put that back up there, but I'm going to back up just a little bit to verse 29. John chapter 16, starting in verse 29. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. Can we just stop right there for a second? How cool is that verse, right? To come to the realization that Jesus knows all things and he does not even need to have anyone ask him questions. And yet we ask him questions all the time, right? We do. And like... If we would just trust what he's doing, we would be at so much peace. Isn't that the goal? Right? Peace? Like I can I, I think happiness is great. I think that comfort is great. But did you know, and I'm sure you do, because I'm sure you guys have experienced it at some point in your life, you can have peace even without happiness. If it's in Jesus Christ, you can have peace even without comfort. If it's in Jesus Christ, I tell, I tell Rachel all the time because we want there's some certain TV shows like the like the police officer TV shows, um, and then they'll 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 take someone hostage and they'll put them in through like put them through uh, uh, torture, right? I would give up any information so fast. Like, it was torture. But then I stop and think, like, I like to think that I'm a little tougher than that, but I, don't, I probably am not. But if I had the peace of Jesus, there isn't anything we can't get through. If we have the peace of Jesus, we can say that last statement. This makes us believe that you came from God. Is there any greater authority on this earth? Is there any greater, like, anything than God? Like, that's what I wish the people that don't follow Jesus, that don't believe in God, that don't, oh, that they just get ridiculous in their understanding of what really is going on in the world, that if they would just stop and realize that there is a God who has dictated His Word to us, and if we would follow that Word... Peace. Peace. And we would be able to settle in and we'd be able to have a relationship with relationship with him that wasn't about fear, that wasn't about legalism, like, oh, I've got to do everything perfectly right, or else he's not gonna love me. We would be able to settle into a relationship with Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, that would then help us reach the world around us, because we aren't concerned about ourselves anymore. 
I think we don't reach the world around us because we care too much about our own stuff. We're too much into our own comforts. We're too much into our own pleasure. We're too much into our own whatever. And we can't focus on others when we're focused on ourselves. Can't happen. So we need to have a relationship with Jesus so we can get out of our own way. That sound okay? Easier said than done, I know. That was verse 30. Verse 31. Do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. And then Jesus, Jesus says why he tells him this stuff. I have told you these things so that in me you have peace. In this world, you will have cake all the time. Right? Is that, that didn't, that's not what it says? I'm sorry, I'm going from memory. In this world, you will have F-250 quad pickup trucks. No, that's not right. In this world, your marriages will be perfect. Hmm. I'm going to get there eventually. In this world, all of your children will know Jesus Christ from the day they're born to the day they die. Oh, man. In this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. You might not have trouble. No. You are going to have trouble. But, <laughs> Rachel gets mad at me when I do this. I like big butts. And this is a really big butt. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Come on. Like that's, what do we have to fear? If we look back in the book of John, all the way back to when Jesus was asleep under the boat and the disciples woke him up, what do you have? He keeps telling them over and over. I think he's telling us. Over and over, what do you have to be afraid of? Why do you need to worry about those gut punches, right? Because they're going to happen. But take heart. I have overcome the world. We see that's great, Jesus, that's you. He says, you can be on my team. <laughs> we get to be on the team of Jesus who has overcome Sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he is reigning in, in heaven with God, waiting for us. Wait, he's waiting for us. I heard a sermon just the other day that talked about um, the verse that says, uh, the, the, son of, the Son of Man, so even implying there that Jesus is, uh, when he uses that title, Son of Man, he's... He's um, relating to us in our humanity because he is the son of God, but he's the son of man. And he relates to us in that position as the son of man. It says the son of man did not come to serve, or not, he did not come to be served, but to serve, right? And I, had a, I preached this one time, and I got a guy get mad at me because I said, Jesus, Jesus didn't come for you to serve him. That's not why he came to earth. Jesus came to earth, and if you look at the original language, I don't have the, the notes in front of me, but it's the same word. Uh, oh, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say, but it, the word means waiting, the original Greek language. I have not come to be served, but I have come to wait on you. I have not come to be waited on, but to wait on you. I have not come to be helped, but to help you. I have not come to, to, to be whatever, but to serve you. How cool is that? The God of the universe comes down to earth as a man, 
and says, the reason I came is not for my benefit. What can we give God anyways, right? He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He has it all. It's all his. He's in control of all of it. What can we possibly give him? He came to wait on us. He's waiting for us to find the peace that comes through him and him alone. Hmm. I think that's just an amazing passage. Take heart. I have overcome the world, and you can be on my team and overcome the world with me. That's pretty cool. Isaiah 41.10, Adam. Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. So, so all, all that stuff, like, there's a so before this in Isaiah 41, but think about all the stuff we've talked about. So, do not fear, for I am with you. Hmm. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, <laughs> here's the big one, and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. How awesome is that? The God of the universe wants and will help you. Are you angry today? Are you sad today? Are you burdened today? Are you uh, downcast? Are you struggling with sin? Or is temptation getting the best of you? I will strengthen you, God says, and help you. And then I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. How many of you need to be held by God tonight? Like, that's all of us. Like, but some, some of us may be more than others. And we need to be honest about that. Amen? Are we honest with ourselves, with our spouse, our family, with God, when we need to be held up by God. He wants to help us. So to tie all this in to what I was feeling this week or this weekend, gut punch. I I really, doubt crept in. Like, God, you told me to do this. I felt led to, to go this direction. Everything is fallen in place, the the vote went the way that it went, people are in agreement about this, and the devil's still working. Man. Because I think the devil wants to discourage us. I think if if one of the the hardest temptations to deal with is, is discouragement. And what is discouragement but a lack of peace? And so I was I was discouraged Friday and yesterday I got yesterday I got to work out some frustrations. I'm I'm working with a buddy on building a deck. And so I got to use my hammer a little bit, you know, and some power tools. That felt good to get some frustration out that way. Man, but but there was discouragement. And even this morning I woke up. I woke up thinking about what I was gonna talk to you guys about tonight. Because it's man, how am I gonna tell them this? How how's this gonna go down? And so the devil was working. And then the peace of Jesus. Come on, amen? How, like, I don't know what you've gone through in your life that, that has needed the peace of God to, to flow over and just to, to get you away from that junk. But it's the peace of God that passes all understanding. I don't know how it works. I don't know. Like, it just, it works. The peace of God Because we have a right relationship with Him. That's why we've got to get to be able to sing, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. If I have nothing else but Jesus, my soul is still thrilled. (laughs) And I don't know if we can say that all the time. Man, it's hot out there and I need my air conditioning. Right? Like, man, 
I don't know if I could sing that song if it's 98 degrees in here right now. I'd like to think I could, and I hope, I hope that I would overcome because God's going to strengthen me and help me, and he's going to uphold me with his righteous right hand if I let him, if I let him. So I don't know where you're at tonight. I, I think that uh, the, the church stuff, the sale of the building, what we're going to do next, we're just going to keep working as hard as we can towards what we feel God is leading us towards, and we'll keep updating as we go. Amen. What's that? Amen. I believe that. And, and here's the deal. I'm not too, and I, I want to make sure that I'm not too arrogant to think that, that maybe God's putting the brakes on a little bit, right? I, I don't, I don't want to be arrogant in this. So that's, I want to make sure we continue to be prayerful. That's why I want to encourage you to come to women's Bible studies and pray together, men's Bible studies and prayer breakfasts and pray together. Uh, continue to come. Like, I want to do some things where we, we walk the property out there, maybe even walk this property, and just continue to pray and to continue to ask God to lead us. Because here's what I believe. I really believed. I'm not, I'm not I'm just, I'm going to just be very honest with you now. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but because uh, I could keep my mouth shut, but I'm not. I, I going into last Sunday night, and I, told, I told this to Marcia, I told this to Rachel, I believed that God was going to give us a unanimous vote, whatever, whatever number that was. I believed that with all of my heart. All right, I'd say I believe that it could have happened. I really felt God leading that strongly and that we were going to count the ballots. We were going to come out here and be like, praise God. Look what he has done in the hearts of our people. He has unified us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and it didn't happen. So maybe we're not ready. But we still have to work to find his direction and his leading. And so we do that. No, one's, no one is giving up here. I want you to hear that clearly. I know that we don't have a traditional sense of church. We meet on Sunday nights. And there's different reasons for that. And, and if you want to ask about that, that's, that's perfectly fine. But, but this church has got to do things a little differently. So let's work together. Amen? Let's be in this together with each other and with Jesus so that we can reach people in Sheraton that maybe no other church could reach. Come on. We've got an opportunity here, but we've got to be together. Okay? So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. We're going to see what God leads. We're going to see what happens. And we're not going to be afraid. Amen? Isaiah 41.10, do not fear. We're not going to be afraid. We're going to take heart because Jesus already has the answer. He's overcome the world. He can overcome this. And we're on Team Jesus. Amen? Team Jesus all the way. Amen. Let's stand together and pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, God, I have felt the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place tonight. And I, I honestly didn't, did not know what I was going to say. I had those two verses that I wanted to bring up. And God, you have spoken tonight. I believe that with everything that I am. And so, Father God, I pray that you would continue to just do a work in the heart of all of our church people. Oh, that we would, we would start to sense what real unity is. That we would start to sense that, that we're with you all the way. And we're not asking you to be with us. To, to, to come along our idea. We are asking you to show us your plan that we can get behind you. And that as we do that, you will lead us into whatever future you have for us. Bless each person here tonight, Father God. We love you and praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys very much. You are dismissed.